So I'm Daniel Bon, I'm a professor of physics at the University of Amsterdam and one of my research interests is uh, aerosol transmission of the coronavirus and that's how I got involved in the discussion on indoor air quality. That's a very hard question. Or no. uh, The definition of indoor air quality is a very hard question because there are several factors that affect the indoor air quality. There are small particles known as smog, uh, there are CO2, there are volatile organic uh, compounds, uh, and all that is part of indoor air quality uh, and uh, is very important, for instance, for the quality of a working environment. So, air quality uh, is uh, everything that is in the air around you. Uh, there's uh, oxygen that you need to breathe, uh, there's nitrogen that doesn't do anything, uh, but there's lots of other stuff in the air, uh, depending on, on where you are. If you're in an urban environment, for instance, there's lots of things that come from car exhausts, uh, such as fine dust and, and NOx and CO2, uh, and you don't want those levels to be too high. Yeah, the CO2 level makes you, if it becomes too high, it makes you uh, less reactive. Uh, NOx and, and fine dust are really uh, dangerous poisons, basically. So you don't want them in your building and you don't want them in your, uh, in your working environment. Yeah, and so there are several uh, things also uh, in, inside the building. You may have uh, sources of uh, volatile organic compounds, uh, which is typically formaldehyde from your book. Uh, cupboard uh, and you don't want too much of that uh, eat also. Yeah? So the World Health Organization uh, has some rules about what a good working environment is uh, or should be uh, and so it's very easy to try and comply uh, with those rules or even to do better and make the working environment even more pleasant and, and less dangerous to work in. Well, so to measure indoor air quality in buildings, uh, you, can, you can measure different components that uh, you think are important for the indoor air quality. I already mentioned uh, small particles, fine dust, uh, CO2 is a very important one, uh, volatile organic compounds are a very important uh, one. If you open your windows, stuff can come from the outside, like NOx. From, from car exhaust, etc. All that you can very easily measure, but then once you've measured it, uh, the question is what, what, what would you want to do with that information? And that's where the, the, the problem is. Uh, so in order for somebody to measure uh, the, the air quality in their working environment, uh, there are all kinds of sensors that can be bought for a couple of tens of euros a piece. Uh, you need three or four. So basically for 100 euros, 150 euros, you can have a complete air quality monitoring system. Uh, again, the question is then, what do you want to do with the information that you get from that system? Yeah, so one thing you could think of is, is the air quality better or worse uh, if you open a window or not? Uh, does the uh, HVAC system of the building contribute something uh, in, for instance, eliminating fine dust? Uh, those, those are the kinds of questions you could try and answer if you measure indoor air quality. It is extremely important to measure indoor air quality. The indoor air quality uh, is, is gives you the well-being uh, at the working environment. Uh, and in addition, it's known that, for instance, the World Health Organization tells us that more people die from fine dust than from cigarette smoking. And that's a very alarming uh, uh, warning of the World Health Organization that we should really do something like I think air quality monitoring uh, is, uh, can be a continuous process because you can just read out the sensors. Uh, there are many CO2 sensors now in, in schools uh, and the school teachers know that if the CO2 sensor goes beyond a certain value, uh, he should either ventilate or send uh, the children uh, outside. 
similar things, similar measures could be done in, in, in office uh, or uh, hospital environments uh, as soon as you've established the rules. I think the rest is easy and air monitoring can be done uh, continuously. That's not a problem at all. So the differences between different environments also uh, uh, depend on what you want to achieve. Uh, the ventilation in schools was something uh, that was installed because of the uh, corona pandemic. Uh, and so if you want to prevent corona infections at schools, uh, you should ventilate. Uh, it's also known that if you ventilate, the CO2 levels go down and uh, the, the attention of the, the children, the pupils, uh, increases. Yeah, so uh, for a different environment, for instance in a hospital, you would want, uh, for instance, to measure airborne uh, viruses or bacteria or fungi. Uh, so uh, the, the, what you want to do really depends on whether you're in an operating room, for instance, in a hospital, uh, whether you're sitting behind your desk or whether you are a school teacher. Everything can be measured. The only question again is what are the appropriate measures uh, to take? So, if a, a facility manager measures the air quality, there are several things that can be done. Um, uh, the, the easiest thing is that all buildings or most buildings have an existing uh, air ventilation, HVAC system. Uh, you should uh, uh, replace the filters uh, regularly because the filters can add to dust and, and, and pollution and, and even uh, fungi. Um, the uh, capacity of the uh, HVAC system can also be changed. Um, but then the, the question is, of course, do you, if you want to bring in more outdoor air, uh, you also have to heat that up in the winter. Uh, and uh, that has an energy cost. So there's an optimum between uh, air quality and the energy efficiency of a building uh, that will probably be different for every building, but that, that doesn't mean that there's no general rules of what one should do to create a healthy working environment. Uh, an HVAC system is simply the air renewal system in a building. Yeah, so uh, uh, air is uh, drawn in from the outside, is circulated in the building, and part of that air uh, is, is also exhausted to, towards the outside. And most ventilation systems in buildings take a, a, a fixed amount of outside air to mix it with the inside air and to renew the air also because of uh, CO2, for instance. Uh, I think HVAC systems generically uh, take some air from the outside, recirculate a part and, and then exhaust a part. Um, different environments, such as a hospital, is very different from a school. Uh, so uh, uh, normally a hospital has a much higher performance uh, uh, air cleaning uh, system than uh, old old school buildings typically have. So every building has, or most buildings have, their own uh, air uh, circulation system. If that is not sufficient, you could think of supplementing uh, the air uh, uh, circulating system with a standalone air purifying system. And there's different principles. There's uh, systems that specifically target viruses in the air, which is important for the corona pandemic. There's uh, uh, filters that, uh, that really remove everything. Also fine dust from the air, which is very important if you're, for instance, in an urban environment and there's lots of fine dust from the cars outside. Um, and so all these systems can help uh, to improve the indoor air quality. And especially, for instance, in old school buildings where the ventilation system is not uh, really uh, performance, uh, I think that uh, standalone systems could be a great help uh, to improve uh, uh, air quality and prevent, hopefully, uh, virus transmission in this and uh, the next pandemics. This is always, the, so these, these standalone air purification systems are, are always used in addition to the existing 
system. So there are different types of uh, air purification systems and there are ones, uh, for instance, with HEPA filters that require uh, regular maintenance because you have to uh, replace the filters. There's other types such as plasma air cleaning or uh, UVC light uh, that really don't require any uh, maintenance. And so I think uh, the solution once you choose is a solution that is appropriate to the building and I think facility managers really know uh, how to manage uh, their buildings. So I think uh, HEPA, Plasma and UVC are the, the most common uh, air cleaning systems. Uh, there, are, there are probably some other uh, solutions but they're, they're not really tested uh, and, and approved. So. If you want to do something, I would, uh, I would suggest that you uh, try one of these uh, and, and specifically the one that is most appropriate for your purpose. So the, the difference between the different air cleaning systems, uh, just as uh, the difference between different ways of uh, getting uh, bacteria off the surface, uh, they have different working principles, different physical principles, uh, but the end result should be the same. No, no airborne viruses in the air, uh, preferably no, uh, no fine dust uh, and a pleasant working environment. So the future of indoor air quality is, is a really interesting question uh, because uh, many people are always worried about cleaning surfaces, cleaning floors, etc. But hardly any people think about cleaning the air. And what happened with the corona pandemic uh, and especially the, the airborne virus discussion is that people became aware that there's stuff floating around in the air that could be dangerous for you. Uh, and so I think there's, there's a great future for uh, in, indoor air quality and, and air cleaning that should supplement the, the normal cleaning procedures uh, that uh, facility managers uh, already do. Um, I, I think this, the, the indoor air quality is a really important uh, part of your working environment. You, you know you've been in buildings where you don't feel very good. Uh, the sick building disease syndrome, yeah, people have worked in buildings uh, that, that have uh, typically high levels of, of dangerous or unpleasant uh, substances. Um, and so uh, the awareness makes that um, there's, there's a lot of interest now uh, for looking better at indoor air quality. Um, this indoor air quality is a very high-tech area, so there's there's constant uh, innovation. There's new UVC systems uh, that use your body heat uh, that uh, makes uh, air go up close to your body, uh, so that UVC lamps uh, can kill the virus uh, close to the ceiling. Um, there's new plasma air cleaning techniques, the HEPA filters get better and better. So there's a lot of innovation in this area uh, and this innovation is of course fueled and helped by a greater interest for indoor air quality. Um, this indoor air quality is a very high-tech area, so there's, there's constant uh, innovation, there's new UVC systems uh, that use your body heat uh, that uh, makes uh, air go up close to your body uh, so that UVC lamps uh, can kill the virus uh, close to the ceiling. Um, there's new plasma air cleaning techniques, the HEPA filters get better and better. So there's a lot of innovation in this area. Uh, and this innovation is of course fueled and helped by a greater interest for indoor air quality. Interest of um, you know, the renewed interest in indoor air quality uh, led a, a number of people, and I'm happy to be part of that, to found the Indoor Air Quality Society. 
And the goal of the society is, is really to uh, give facility managers, for instance, guidelines for how to deal with indoor air quality, um, uh, because there's, there's not yet any government rules uh, uh, or certifications that really help facility managers to be able to do the right thing. And that's, that's what we are here uh, to help with.